Hello and welcome back. The next video I would like to deal with <coughs> regarding after installation is the handle server. The handle server uh, allows you to assign a, a digital uh, object identifier to an electronic resource. So that when you type in the handle URL, it will always resolve to the resource on the web. Even if the resource on the web changes, we just update the links in the handle server. Okay. So that's the basic um, way it works. Um, the handle resolves through the handle service to a URL, to a persistent URL where you will find the, um, uh, the resource. Here we go. The handle service allows you to apply a short URL which is persistent for the purposes of citation and discovery on the web. Okay, um, let's see how our handle resolves. I'm going to open the handle uh, proxy website here, handle.net there. I'm going to take an example handle here and copy it and then paste it in here and see how it resolves. I'll submit it and see how it resolves. And there we go. The handle is resolved. There it is. Uh, and this particular one is a presentation by Ina Smith about being an open scholarship man uh, manager. And uh, let's just see how. Okay, well, not too many views, but that is the operation of how the handle uh, um, resolving works. Okay, so the first step. Uh, is to register as a handle server. So let's open that in a, in a new tab. So what is required is for you to go to this website here and click here and complete the registration form. There is an annual uh, service fee, I must uh, warn you. So budget for the annual service fee. Okay, so once you've completed the registration form, uh, You'll, by email you probably get your prefix uh, and that's what you were looking for this prefix here uh, you'll get a you'll become the registered uh, owner of that prefix okay so once you get when you get the email back and you've got a, you've been registered with the prefix then the next step is to log into the server and uh, become a root user and then Sorry, not the root user, this is wrong. Okay, log into the server as the DSpace user, and then um, copy and paste this command in the terminal. So let's do that. Uh, I'm already here, I'm logged in, I've got a terminal running. I've pinged our development server there. So I'm just going to log into the development server. This is H, this space, and repository, repository, and somewhere else there. Repository, yeah, it's not the problem. Okay, then the password. There you go, you see I'm logged in. So when you're logged in, then um, when you're logged in, you copy and paste this to execute this command. And paste that in there. And wait a while for it to come up. I should ask you a few questions. <coughs> Just waiting for it. Okay, there we go. So the first thing it wants to know is um, whether you want a regular handle server or a caching server. The default is a regular handle server. If we press enter, will this be a primary server? Yes. Uh, press enter for default. Now it asks which IP address will the server be accessible. So we want to know what is the IP address of the uh, repository that's on the server. So let's ping it uh, to get its repository. 
repository. That's some nice resume. And you can see there it is 146232129.22. Copy that. And conveniently, I think it will work if I paste it there. Let's press enter. Uh, we don't need this anymore, so I'm going to close that terminal. Uh, enter the TCP UDP port number. This is the best for it 242641. HTTP interface, we're listening on port 8000. Would you like to log all access to the server? Yes. Uh, how often do you want to log fast to rotate? It was a weekly. Now enter the version serial number. This is the prefix. Uh, this is what you apply for. So let's assume that you were assigned the prefix of this 119, for example. So we type it in there and press enter. Then a short description of the server. Uh, so you're going to say this is a test server. But you will type in my institution um, repository server, etc. etc. And institution. Stone Marsh University University Library. Okay, into the name of contact person. Okay, that'll be me. And telephone number. Well, no, we don't want to put a telephone number in there. Email address, so that's fine. Let's get some. Do you want to disable UDP services? No. Server keys already exist. Do you want to create new ones? Say yes. Now the private key and those depends whether you want to use it. For, for now I'm going to say no. And administrator keys, I'm going to say no as well for that there. Okay, so now what it should have done uh, is created this site bundle zip file. Now you take that site bundle zip file, which is there, and mail it to this email address. And that will then register um, your server as a handle server for that particular prefix. So if I copy, okay, then when it comes back, step four, after there's a reply, um, we now need to modify the config file. So let's copy and paste that and modify the config file. And as you can see, there is the bind address, etc., that was used for the server type. TCP and all those details, etc. etc. Okay. So now what do we want to do? We want to replace all mention of this, uh, for example, that day. So it reflects our prefix, which is one triple nine. So we're going to look for well, all instances of three hundred there in, in A. And we're going down here, going down there's nothing there. Okay, so now it says your name and authority. So we got one triple nine. Oh, sorry, four nines. All right, and where is it again? Oh, there it is again. So it's one, two, three, four. Name and authority. And so on and so forth. And there it is. One, two, three, four. And then we save the file control O. Write it out. Then inside the server config clause, we must add this. So let's copy and paste that. Copy. So in the server config, we've got to add this. Uh, let's paste it in. There we go. Storage types, custom. So let's see what it looks like in the example. Um, server config. Here we go, we've pasted it in. So that's the tricky part. Done. And control O to write it out. Um, what else is there? Well, that's it in the config file. 
so if the emails come back, we've got our prefix, which we've modified with there, and modified it there, and somewhere else. There were three places that we modified it. Okay. All right. Um, oh, there we are, and there as well. Modified it there. Okay. So, what's the next step? Right, we write that out. Control O to write it out, and Control X. The next thing is to make sure our DSpace is correctly um, configured with the right handle prefix. So let's go and modify DSpace config file, copy and paste, and we want to look for this handle prefix. So Control W is the search, and we want to search for handle dot prefix in the file. So there we go. Boom, straight into the handle of prefix. Okay, now note here, it points to this variable. So what this change now um, means that we don't set up the handle prefix here, actually. So what we have to do is set up the handle prefix. Um, I'm going to modify this. If I'm Uh, and I'm going to say that uh, we should actually now uh, modify the handle prefix in the build properties file. Uh, it's actually now in the build.properties file. For all the Save that. And let's just highlight that, that and tell it's there to make sure people see that. So now we must change it in the bold properties file. So we will copy and paste it. So now we're in the bold properties file there, you see there? Home display source bold properties file. And now we're going to look for the handle server parameter. And we're going down, we're going down, that's email. There we go, handle configuration is now in the build properties file. So now we tell it to go to there. And our handle prefix is one, triple, nine. Save that and write it out. Okay. There we go, replace this access to handle, for example. Then the next issue would be to rebuild uh, uh, this space according to one of these rebuild scripts, which we have previously done in a previous video. <coughs> After the rebuild, you want to update all the prefixes that had a 1, 2, 3, default 1, 2, 3 to your prefix that you have. And you simply run this command there. Uh, and you substitute this with the prefix that you have here. For example, one triple nine, and it will change all the one two threes to one triple nine. For example, all right. The next thing you want to make sure um, is that the firewall ports are open, and I'm talking about on the local server and the campus firewall. These ports must be open. Those two ports, eight thousand and two six four one. They must be open on the local server and they must be open on the campus firewall. Okay? So there I've made a note. And they must be open on UDP, using the UDP protocol and the TCP protocol. So please speak to your network administrator on campus to make sure that those two ports using UDP and TCP are open on the campus firewall. And also make sure that uh, on the local server that those two ports are open. So here's a help we can click there and we go down here. Uh, to do that, install the, the firewall uh, servers, 
check its status, uh, and then um, allow these. I'll let you go through. But specifically, we want to allow 2641 and 8000. Those are the two ports for the handle. So, and then we enable the firewall. And this is a minimum for security on the firewall. Uh, I think I'll come back to this under secure, uh, secure connection, secure internet connections. Okay, but that's just a warning to open up on the local server and to open it up on the um, campus firewall. The next thing is to make sure when um, the handle service runs that it has enough RAM, etc. to run. So I'll just refer again to this file here and make sure that there is uh, enough uh, memory RAM for a handle server to run with. Okay. Then we want to start the handle server automatically every time the server reboots. Okay. So what we did uh, as a trick here is we modified this uh, EDC Oracle file, um, which basically means whatever is in that file is is the last thing to start up after everything else starts up on the server. So the last thing we want to start up is the um, is the handle server after everything else is started. So we modify that file and then here just before it says exit zero there, yeah, make some space and you just type this in. Yeah. Remember we installed this space and all the codes in the home folder and you paste that in there and control O and control X. So now the next time the server restarts, the handle server will start. So that completes um, setting up the handle server. I just want to go through um, checking um, the handle server, if you have problems with it. Uh, if you want to see if it's uh, listening on the correct port, just to copy and paste that in there. And to see uh, not our handle server is not running, not on our test server. But you should see um, these results coming back. Um, you can test the server uh, from off campus to see that that port is open and listening. So let's open that in an, another tab and we can see here that our uh, Sun Scholar machine, our repository is listening on port 8000 and it's listening for um, handles. So for example, let's go and find a typical handle to use, uh, this one here, there's a handle line 893 and there's the full handle there, so let's copy that and see how our machine resolves, and if we paste that in there and go there, there we go, it resolves, so it's working on port 8000 on the web, it's working as it should, great stuff, okay, Then you see if the service is running, uh, you must make sure there's only one instance of the service running. Do that command and you'll come back with, you'll see they'll come back with a whole lot of details about the service running like that, for example. Another thing to check is to make sure that the handle server has written the proper credentials or, or runtime credentials to that folder. Um, So our handle server here is not running, so um, we won't get one. But when it runs, you will see that there is a root info file, a root underscore info file. You'll see there, there is a, a root underscore uh, info file. And then um, have a look at the log files, obviously. Uh, see what's wrong in the log files. So let's have a look at that. See, no, no, we haven't got a service running on our test server. Okay, and you can of course then rebuild, uh, uh, rebuild the config file. Don't need this to do anymore. Uh, make sure, and you can manually start the uh, you can start the service menu. We're starting at the S U D, so it runs up as the root server. Okay, and here's an example listing of all the files in this folder here to give you an idea of what a healthy folder looks like. And then uh, here's some documentation on the handle server. Okay, I'm going to close this terminal. I think that concludes the handle server uh, and how to set it up.
how to debug its operation. Remember, you must only have the handle server running once. Right, you can only have one instance of the handle server running. I think that completes the handle server setup. Okay, thank you very much.